Shambles. How often do we see that word thrown about in football? The truth is, the further down the football pyramid you go, the more you're going to see that word. For example, you are very likely to see some shambolic defending on a weekly basis at Sunday League, which is a stark contrast to the quality of defending in the Premier League, who are about as sharp as you can condition a footballer to be. A team in the fourth division of English football is obviously not going to be a 100% smooth sailing, perfectly operated club, but the catalogue of errors already made by Crawley Town since their takeover by a group of American NFT investors, nicknamed the Crypto Bros, reflects just how poorly run the club currently is. As they say, the league table does not lie, and Crawley Town are performing at a level below their current league. On the surface, you can see a decline in performance since the new owners arrived, finishing 12th last season to currently sitting 21st in League 2, and relegation out of the Football League looming. But a peak under the surface shows a storm of issues, and the owners who made their money in crypto are out of their depths and don't have the right skills to navigate. Six managers in the last 12 months. Very strange activity in the transfer market. Dropping their experienced players. Scouting YouTubers at a Sidemen FC charity match. Their unconventional ownership approach clearly is not working and their situation looks bleak. A relatively small club with limited funds, Crawley Town has seen some incremental progress over the years, making the step from amateur to semi-professional in 1962 and then fully professional in 2005. Growth was slow but certainly plain to see as they were promoted into the conference in 2004, eventually winning the conference in 2011 and then immediately getting promoted to League One in 2012. And in this time, they leased the Broadfield Stadium to Crawley Town to secure the long-term sustainability of the club. They made record signings of Matt Tubbs for £70,000, Sergio Torres for £100,000 and Richard Brody for an estimated £275,000. They went on an impressive FA Cup run to end up facing Manchester United in the fifth round, losing 1-0 but this was a huge cup run for this side. This was a very successful period for Crawley Town and there was definitely potential to continue this growth provided it was left to keep doing what it was doing. However, in March 2011, club owner Bruce Winfield died from cancer and a slowing of this growth followed. Players like Matt Tubbs and Tyrone Barnett were sold for £800,000 and £1.1 million respectively. The club captain Pablo Mills was stripped of his captaincy for a post-match brawl against Bradford and eventually released by the club. The success the club was enjoying stopped and after three seasons they were relegated to League 2 where they have remained ever since. But the club had grown to a point where it showed potential and therefore it became an investment opportunity. Turkish businessman Zia Even bought the club in 2016 aiming to reach the championship within 8 to 10 years. But the club did not reach a higher league finish in League 2 than 12th which is when a group of US cryptocurrency investors under the name Wagme United LLC bought the club and that takes us to the start of this season. Once again, with their eyes set on reaching the higher divisions, co-owner Preston Johnson said they think the club can do better and our fans deserve better. He and his crypto buddy and co-owner Eben Smith vowed to build a tight-knit community of fans stretching from West Sussex to anywhere in the world with an internet connection, which sounds just like the slogan for every NFT project. And while these sorts of things do have the potential to make money, there are many cases where it just ends up being a failed project or one of those commonly reported rug pulls where an NFT founder drives up the price of his project through promoting it in the media to dupe investors out of their money as the project ends up being worthless. Now while this is not necessarily the case for what is happening at Crawley Town, their season so far has been one filled with controversy, poor management and reckless leadership that has resulted in many sensitive legal issues for the club, which I'm not saying is the blueprint of their plan to go viral on the internet, but it is how their media coverage has panned out this season. Buying the club in April of 2022. In their first month, they had to suspend manager John Yems, who was accused of some very offensive racist behaviour, calling players of Asian heritage in the squad terrorists, suicide bombers and curry munchers, creating a racially segregated dressing room with white players told to not change in the black players room and making racial slurs about black and Asian players. John Yems was appointed manager of Crawley Town in 2019 and an investigation into the 63 year old resulted in his ban from the sport for 18 months after being found guilty of 12 charges of racist abuse. The FA concluded on the investigation that John Yems is not a conscious racist 
He was replaced by the highly rated Kevin Betsy, who was the Arsenal under 23 coach. The new owners made plans to make NFTs another revenue stream for the club, dropping an NFT that gave holders an exclusive third kit while only selling their main two kits in the club shop, as well as acting as a virtual season ticket for their fans who purchased the ticket outside of the country and giving their fans a say in the decision making at the club. Their idea behind that was not to incentivize fans to vote on whether they should sell Coke or Pepsi at their games, but to decide on things like how much of their wage budget goes into their attack, for example. An intriguing concept, but not one that guarantees the success of a football club. In fact, it probably hinders it. And back to new manager Kevin Betsy. Coming from Arsenal, he promised football that would be attacking, adaptable and aggressive with and without the ball. But a disastrous start to the season, winning only one of his first 12 league games in charge, meant he was sacked in October of 2022, with the club at the bottom of the League 2 table. Ashley Young's brother became the caretaker manager and only lost one game in seven, getting them out of the relegation zone. But the Crypto Bros did not want to hire him, saying, we got outshot 87 to 28 over his five remaining games. Now, they are the owners and have the right to hire a manager who can implement a style of football that they want. But to base it on the number of shots in these games and not the actual results is not really the stat that they should be caring about. He was replaced with the Peterborough under-18s coach, Matthew Etherington, who co-owner Preston Johnson said was a good fit for Crawley because of his appetite for risk. Not the most tasteful description of an ex-footballer known for his gambling problems. But Etherington was deemed too much of a risk and after only three games and 34 days in charge, he was sacked too. In this short time, Etherington was told to not play star striker Tom Nichols as the club agreed to sell him to relegation rivals Gillingham and he was not allowed to play after they agreed on a deal. So Nichols' last game for the club was on the 22nd of November, didn't play for the entirety of December and the fans were outraged by the sale of their best player. Another striker related strange footballing decision was to sign last season's League 2 top goal scorer Dominic Telford from Newport in the summer the new owners arrived. A statement signing for the new owners based on stats and therefore quite intelligent to snap him up. But the details of his contract aren't as intelligent. They more than doubled his Newport wages before bonuses but one of his bonuses is to win the ball back in the opposition half. This will obviously reflect the way that they want to play with a high press but it's not exactly a sound financial decision to be making. They also tried to sign a centre back with a bonus per header as part of his contract which as centre-backs typically make between 20 and 30 headers a game, could have been very lucrative for the fourth tier. But their most unheard of recruitment strategy took place when they scouted YouTubers at the Sidemen FC charity match and even offered YouTubers Tobe Jizzle and Manny the chance to train with the first team to potentially play for them. This earned them a range of labels. Some people all for this innovation, other people branding the club a joke. Preston Johnson defended the idea saying, it's no secret we want Crawley Town to become the internet's team. And while we're normally referring to growing a global community of online fans when we use that term, why can't it also refer to the players we scout and recruit to join our squad? Once again, they did make headlines, but not exactly for footballing reasons. The podcast Lower League Look, a podcast sponsored by Wagme, came out and said they thought this was a terrible idea. Crawley Town ended up signing none of the YouTubers. Matthew Etherington's final game, a 2-1 defeat to Sutton, was also the last game for experienced players Tony Craig, Jake Hessenthaler and club captain George Franco. Caretaker Darren Byfield took over for Crawley's game against Stevenage, a game where Preston Johnson was in the dugout and at one point asked an assistant referee how do subs work. Publicly ridiculed for this, Johnson was not at the next match. Crawley Town's Supporters Association requested a meeting with the owners, saying when Wagme bought the club, they said a conventional approach to ownership hasn't worked. Well, an unconventional approach isn't working either. The owners delayed this meeting, saying the club needed to get to the bottom of sensitive legal issues. Crawley Town appointed Scott Lindsay as manager on the 11th of January 2023, who was previously managing the promotion chasing Swindon Town, and he has got a serious job on his hands. Not even 12 months into the Crypto Bros ownership, and people have already branded their leadership reckless and a shambles. Making the headlines for all the wrong reasons, this has not been a good start to their tenure, and their inexperience in the world of football is showing. However, the one thing they do know is how to make money. Money. And by continuously making the headlines, they are in a way promoting their brand and their NFT revenue stream. So they do have enough money to keep spending the kind of money that they are spending and remain in charge.
charge of the club for multiple seasons. So even if they completely flop this season, they have several attempts to get this right. With the success of other massive cash injections at lower league clubs, I do expect the fortunes to turn around. But it has indisputably been a shambolic start for the crypto owners of Crawley Town. That's all for this video. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Something like 96% of you aren't subscribed. Please click the button. It's right there. All right, peace.